Hey everybody, thank you once again for joining me. We're going to kick off this lesson with one on dividing fractions using common denominators. And uh, you're going to see two different methods of dividing fractions. One is the common denominator method, and there's going to be another one I'm going to teach you after this one. And they can both be used um, whenever you please. So we have here some key points to start this one off. And the first thing you need to remember is turn any mixed fraction into an improper fraction. And this is key here. Turn the mixed ones into an improper one before doing anything else. And then at the very end, you can turn your improper fraction, if there is one at the end of the final answer, back into a mixed fraction. The second thing you need to remember is whatever you multiply the numerator by, you have to multiply the denominator by to make an equivalent fraction. And the third thing is that in division, the second number you see always represents how many times it goes into the first number. If that sounds confusing, this is what I'm essentially saying. If we go $8 divided by $2, what I'm saying, or even forget the dollar sign, let's just say 8 divided by 2. What we're essentially saying is how many times does 2 go into 8? We say it goes into it two, four, six, eight. It goes into it four times. You go two, four, six, eight, that's four times. The answer is four. So keep that in mind. The second number always represents how many times it goes into the first number. Now that being said, let's uh, do a few examples. You've got your notepad in front of you and I've got my sketch pad over here. And we're just going to make questions as we go. Let's start with one over here. Let's say one and a half divided by one quarter. And we got division now happening here. So step one says turn your mixed fractions, if there are any, into an improper fraction. And if you remember the steps here for doing that, what we're essentially doing is multiplying these two and then adding the remainder, which is the top number. And if we do that, we go two times one is two plus one is three halves. Three over two means three halves. And we're going to divide that by one quarter. The common denominator method says you need common denominators. So we're going to multiply this one by 2 and to make it into a 4 and whatever we do here, we do there on the numerator. And this turns into 6 fourths divided by 1 fourth. Ladies and gentlemen, once you get to this step, all you're going to do is divide these numerators. Just divide them. Go 6 divided by 1 is equal to 6. We don't have to do anything here because 4 divided by 4 is 1. And you essentially just get 6 over 1. We won't even bother doing that. We'll just make it a rule to say if the denominators are the same, divide these numerators. 6 divided by 1 is 6 and that's your answer. You're done. I don't want you to really memorize these steps as much as understand why it's happening this way and why this answer makes sense. Because if we go back to our definition, which is right here, that the second number always it represents how many times it goes into the first number. Let's bring some money into this example. One and a half means a dollar and a half, which is a dollar fifty. And if I divide by a quarter, which is twenty-five cents. How many times does 25 cents go into a dollar fifty? If you keep counting by quarters, you got six quarters makes a dollar fifty. So 25 cents goes into it six times. That's your answer. It's six. That's why it works. That's why it makes sense. Now that's the first example. Let's build on this. Maybe we'll do two more. Let's say we've got, uh, let's say we have one third divided by uh, let's say one fourth. We got one third divided by one fourth. And we would need an answer using the common denominator method. So that being said, we've got three and a four. What's common between them is, uh, well, I don't know, geez, maybe, maybe a 12. So we'll go like this. We'll go times this one by three, times this one by four. Whatever you do, copy it on top. Let's make the equivalent fractions. The first one becomes that divided by 3 over 12. Now at this point, we can ignore the denominators, just divide the numerators. And if you do that, you get 4 divided by 3. We'll take this one, we'll take that one, we'll stack them in division. And that's our answer. 
almost our answer, we have to do one more step, which is convert it into a mixed fraction. And if you do that, you get, let's see, four divided by three, that makes one whole and one third. So you could do it that way, or you could just say how many times does three go into four, it goes into a one time, and there's a third left over. So I'm assuming you know how to turn an improper fraction back into a mixed fraction when I, when I do this. Let's do one more, just for good measure. Uh, let's make something up. Let's say we have three eighths divided by two thirds. And we need common denominators. So we'll go ahead and say 24 is a common denominator. So we'll times by eight times by eight times this one by three. And our fractions now become nine over 24 divided by 16 over 24. And in this example here, we have 24 divided by 24 is one. We can ignore it as a denominator of one. And our numerators will be nine over 16. So we'll take this guy and this guy and go just nine divided by 16. And can we reduce it? Let's see, what goes in a nine, uh, three and nine, none of them go into 16. This is lowest terms.